okay, so if you are online, I'm doing something slightly different today because I think the worksheet is important. And so I want you guys to take a look at the worksheet first. So just above videos, you click on the handout for chapter 19. It'll give you what we're working on. I'm also going to be using the chapter 19 pension worksheet. I'm going to do it electronically. This is just a generic one. It's a little bigger. And so please take a minute to read the problem and then I'll start to walk you through it. Hello, Abigail, if, or Abby, I apologize. Um, we're on this worksheet. So if you go into modules, scroll down, got the handout for check, uh, handout 9.5 that we're working on. And then if you wanna use Excel, you can use the pension worksheet. Otherwise you can handwrite it or enter it in on Word. Okay, ready to go? All right, so I'm doing this a little bit different. Rather than talking about the content of what's going on in the chapter, I wanted to show you how to use the worksheet, how I use the worksheet, and I think it will help you with complicated problems. I've given you guys handouts so you guys can use them right on them at home. If you prefer electronics, there are you can access these easily. And I think they make it easier to do these types of questions and keep yourself organized. I am still going to go back to the beginning, but I want to start with just the worksheet. So we're looking at uh, objective two instead of objective one. All right. So these are kind of descriptive columns. And so that first line there is going to be your balance at January 1, 2025. Okay, and so we're gonna enter in our balances and it tells you that we have a projected benefit obligation. So that's a liability of 2.8 million and the fair value of plan assets at 2.4 million. So there's a couple ways you can do this sheet. If you'll notice, I put the debits and credits aside. Um, but what I like to do is put in your credits as negatives put in your debits as positives. So that way when they're in the columns that they'll properly add up. Now you can use this whatever way you find is best, but that's the way I prefer to do that. So 8 million, let me just format this real quick.
and then his commas. Oh, not 28. Okay. And then this is a credit because it's a liability account. Right. And then your plan assets, 2.4 million. And so our pension, whether it's in an asset or a liability state, you just add these two and we end up with a liability or credit of 2.4. Okay, so across that top line, pension liability, pension obligation, and plan assets. Okay, everybody see where I got that from? For those of you that are online, that comes from these two here. Okay. Now I'm going to go through and start the transactions for 2025. It tells us the service cost is going to be 200,000 for 2025. So 200,000. And this is an expense, so it's a debit. I put it in there as a positive. And because my service costs are four employees are going to receive the pension earlier. Hello, Daisy. So what you're gonna to have to do to get the thing that we're working on is go into uh, the modules and then from the handouts, start with handout 9.5. If you wanna work in Excel, you just download the pension worksheet. And so our service cost increases our obligation. So that's our credit there. And then one of the things that's missing here but we need to account for it is our interest expense. So interest expense on pension benefit obligation. And it tells us that the interest settlement rate applicable to the plan is 8%. So we're looking at here now, this is for 8%. And so what we want to do is we want to multiply the pension benefit obligation, the 2.8 million times, and I'll put in a negative here because I want this to come out as positive because it's a debit and I'm going to multiply by 0 0.08. And I get 224,000 debit. Now this is our interest expense, so it's also going to add to our obligation. And that's a credit. Now typically here, what we would do is look at, and I always put the expected return in, here, and so if I take the expected return, I want to take the plan assets, and it tells us that the expected rate of return on assets is 6%, so I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.06, and this is going to be a credit.
this also increases our plan assets. And so the debit to offset that is plan assets. No, that's the difference between the plan assets and the pro projected benefit obligation. So in your memo side, you're keeping what is your total assets and liabilities because this, remember, usually that fund is separate from your account, the plan assets and the obligation, even though you record them, you record the net liability. So then we have expected return. Now, in this case, expected return and actual are equal. So that tells us we're not gonna have to worry about any gains, which we would have to adjust for. And then the last thing it tells us about, or no, I'm sorry, it's not, it's the next thing that they tell us about is that prior service cost is zero, so we're gonna ignore that. And then it says contributions and funding to the plan. So we took out cash minus 180,000 and we funded the plan with it. And so that's gonna be our debit to our credit. Now we also have benefits paid. And this is gonna be from the plan. So we're not going to make an entry here to our cash. Our goal is to come over and what we're doing is we're reducing our obligation. So we had 149,000 and that's a debit but we're using up our plan assets for it. And so the credit reduces our plan assets. No, ask questions, please. No, because you're not trying to make them balance here. No, we're not, we're not making this balance. That's a prior existing ba balances. Okay. So we have benefits paid from the plan. Actual return on plan assets we said was the same as the expected return. Contributions. And so here we are at the end. And so we can calculate our journal entry. And what we do is we sum up our transactions. And we know that's a net debit. Here we know that's a credit. And then we don't have any other activity, but I'll just put the zeros in. But I'm not gonna put anything in, in pension asset or liability yet because we wanna make sure that has changed. And so what we look at is our ending balance. And we're gonna go over to the plan assets and we're gonna sum that up. And that's a credit of
and then we have a debit of 2,575. So the difference here That didn't work, right? The difference here, 5,000 now, tells us what we have to make for the journal entry for the pension liability. So we take the end balance, we subtract the beginning balance, and we know that we have to make a credit. No, sorry, this is a credit too. So how does this work now? I'm gonna make this smaller, and I apologize, I know that you won't be able to see it, but I'll zoom back in in a second. So we, now we have down below how we can make our entry. So here, we know that this first column is gonna be pension expense. So we have pension expense. And I like to just pull the numbers in case I have to go back and make any changes. And then I have two credits left on that. And the first one would be cash. And then the second one is going to be pension asset slash liability. And that is the 100,000. So I like this worksheet because if you can learn to put the things in the places where they are supposed to be, then you'll get the entry that you need and it is fairly straightforward. Now I'm not telling you that this process is not complicated and the next one's gonna have a little more complicated and we'll walk through some additional complicated ones. It's a challenge. And again, if you can keep track of this in your head a different way, if you wanna put different types of numbers, you can certainly do that. I just prefer the positives and the negatives. Any questions? Okay, so now it's asking us for 2026. And so we're gonna go ahead and put 2026 in here as well. And so we have the additional prior service cost. And this is done on January 1 of 2026. And basically they're giving the employees credit for prior service. And so this is going to feed into increasing our pension expense. And so 300,000 and that's gonna be a debit. The credit is going to increase our pension benefit obligation. And so now we have our balance at one, one, that 2026. And so we add these two and we just carry that one down.
Okay, so we've taken care of the first part that we have, and now we just have to go through our expenses. So we're gonna go ahead and go with service costs, or costs they call it. And this year it's 225,000. That's gonna be a debit, but we know it's going to increase our liability. So it's a credit there. I don't know if that helps or doesn't help. Which is this easier to see? I don't know, for some reason, and then I bump it up to 70% and it looks weird. Okay. If you're having any trouble seeing, let me know. Yes, that helps me as well. Okay, so now we have to calculate our interest cost. And so again, we're gonna take, what was our, ba our balance as of January 1, 2026 with the adjustment? And we're gonna multiply that by 0 0.08. And this is the debit, so we wanna put the negative sign in there. And here, our credit because it increases our obligations. Yes. Now here, we're gonna end up having an actual return that's different from expected. And so our actual return here is 190,000. So it's a credit. But it increases our plan assets. And so that's the debit. Now our expected return should have been the 2,575,000 multiplied by 0.06. And so our actual return was greater. And so what we have to do now is adjust for that. That's not right, I made a mistake somewhere. And so we want that to Goodness, I had it right last time. Thirty-five thousand five hundred is the debit, and then the credit is to OCI gain or loss. And then you have amortization of prior service cost. And that's 75,000. And the offsetting credit is going to reduce 
our prior service costs. And we have contributions. And the contributions come out of cash. This time they're 230,000. And the debit increases our plan assets. and then benefits played from the plan. And this is 190,000. Oh, nope, not there, sorry. Here, 190,000, because it reduces our obligation. And then it also reduces our assets. So this is a debit, this is a credit. Any questions so far? Okay, so now we're gonna do our journal entry. And we just have to sum up our totals. And then we have to calculate our ending balances before we can determine whether or not it's an asset or a liability. And we're going to sum up from the three million three seventy five down, and we get three million six hundred and eighty thousand credit. and two million eight oh five debit. So the difference, 875,000 is what our new liability needs to be. So we take this, we subtract the 500,000 to get the difference. And this is a credit, credit, debit, credit, debit. So for 2026, we have our pension expense. And that's 415,000. Do we have any other debits? Yes, we have other comprehensive income. And this is due to prior service costs. And that's 75,000. Oh, no, that's not right. Sorry, we had to do the net 225,000 because we did not make an entry initially for the 300,000. And so what we do is net it out. So 225,000. And then we have credits, so cash is our first one. And then other comprehensive income. 
and this is due to gain or loss on assets. And so that's the 35,000. And then the last one would be pension asset or liability. And remember to pick up not the ending balance, but your adjustment of 375,000. How do we feel about the worksheet? Did I give a slow enough explanation? Okay, so no problem. I'll give you guys like a three minute break, catch up. Make sure that everything's in there. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Drop my name or anything. I put something on the wrong row and then I started editing it. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. How far up do you need me to go? 25 or 26? Okay, we good here? Okay, so for those of you who are all set, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take about three or four minutes to answer the practice questions. I'm still gonna leave this up here so that you can make any changes or adjustments you need. And then we'll go through those questions. 